Yeah, this Revox is just a couple hours away from being electronically balanced, plus four, and available in my patch bay. Oh man, am I ever excited to finish restoring my Revox A77 reel-to-reel -reel tape machine. I'm almost through the complete electronic and mechanical overhaul. I'm just waiting on a couple of extra parts. And while I'm waiting on those parts, I thought I'd deal with the next challenge. How do I actually integrate or interface this tape machine into my own studio setup? You know, just like a lot of vintage electronics, this tape machine has unbalanced inputs and outputs sitting on phono jacks. So for today's session, I'm gonna share exactly how I like to deal with these unbalanced signals in my own studio. You know, over the years, I put a lot of project studios together, both permanent and temporary installations. And one common issue that I had with almost every one of those studios was the noise floor was substantially higher than I was used to working in, in a professional studio. So when I made the decision to move my studio north and into a new facility, I took a very serious approach to the whole issue of noise floor. I wanted this studio to be the quietest room that I had ever worked in. Now, one strategy that I adopted early on, I believe has paid major dividends, and that is making sure that everything in this studio is balanced. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that every single thing that goes back and connects to my patch bay has to be on a balanced line. It's important for us to take a moment and talk about the differences between a balanced and an unbalanced line. In order for any audio signal to pass through a cable or a piece of equipment, two signals are needed, a plus and a minus. In a professionally balanced studio line, there are always three conductors. Two of those conductors are for the plus and minus signal, and those are on a twisted pair that run down the middle of the wire. The third conductor or the third pin, that's a shield that shields those two wires inside that connector from outside interferences and so on. There's a major distinction about this shield in a balanced line. The shield never passes audio. So this is the big difference in an unbalanced line. Unlike a Studio XLR that has three conductors, this phono jack, which we're all familiar with, in a semi-pro world, right? This is a two conductor lead. Well, what a phono jack does is it takes the plus signal and it sends it down the center pin. And then it takes the minus signal and it just attaches it to the shield. And this, in my own experience, is exactly where noise starts in a studio and it just never ends. As soon as one of those audio signals is on the shield, well now, this piece of wire sort of acts as like an antenna. It starts picking up all kinds of noise from this AC line, from this transformer over here. Wherever this wire comes in contact or, or proximity to, any kind of magnetic field that's being generated is gonna be picked up by this wire, almost like an antenna, and it's gonna be included in the sound that's picked up on the other end. So for me, that's sort of the major differentiation and definition of a balanced line. In a properly balanced studio line, the audio signal, the plus and minus, never touches the shield. It is strictly going down a pair of wires. And to make it even more complicated, what happens is it's exactly the same signal going down both of those twisted wires, except one of them is out of phase, the negative side. Now the reason for this is very cool. On the other end, on the receiving end, or the mic preamp, it's called a differential amplifier. And what that does, it takes both of the signals coming down that twisted pair. The positive side, it treats as a positive. The negative side, which is out of phase with the positive side by 180 degrees, it flips the phase of that again and puts it back in phase and only amplifies the difference. Well, in this example, let's say we're talking about a microphone cable. And imagine that mic cable running maybe 100 feet from the front of house console to stage. Well, the chances of that microphone cable picking up any interference from a transformer or all kinds of issues is very, very high. Well, what's really cool about that differential amplifier on the receiving end is that it understands this phase reverse that's going on in the twisted pair. And on the other end, it compensates for that and it basically subtracts a difference and it knows what to boost. If that 100 foot mic cable picked up any noise, 
the noise would have been picked up by both of the twisted wires. And this is what makes that differential amplifier so cool. It simply gets cancelled out because it's showing up equally on both lines, whereas everything else is showing 180 degrees out of phase. So I just sort of make a rule early on in my studio. Every single wire that's connected to my patch bay is going to be a fully balanced connection. Well, for 90% of the gear that we connect in our studio, that's no problem. But what happens when a vintage tape machine comes along and it's got unbalanced inputs? It's got inputs and outputs that only have two conductors. Where does that third conductor go? Now, you'll hear all kinds of schools of thought on what people like to do with the third wire when they're dealing with an unbalanced connection. You know, with the modern DAW and the output impedances that all of these devices have, it's physically possible to connect a balanced output to an unbalanced input, but not without modifying the cable and doing some trickery inside that cable, like tie the shield to one of the audio signals. Yeah, remember what I said about that shield in my own studio? Not a single audio signal is going to pass on a shield. So any kind of modification of that wire where I'm tying that shield in, is it just a no-go? So how do I go about dealing with this two conductor output in a three conductor world. My preferred method of handling this is to use active electronics to bring any of these unbalanced signals up to studio line level of plus four. Now, I didn't have to go digging very far yesterday before I found this awesome piece of kit. I bought this little PV interface amplifier 25 years ago, I think, and I used it for my little mini disc player so that I could get that consumer output level of minus 10 up to plus 4. It's a very simple active circuit that takes studio line level of plus 4 and takes it down to minus 10 to an unbalanced output, which I can connect directly to my Revox. I can then take the output of the Revox and come right back into the RCA input, the other side of this little device, which then gets amplified back up to plus 4. So this is active electronics doing a killer job of bringing this Revox up to plus four. The beautiful thing about this is that the only antenna wire that I have in my studio, the only unbalanced wire, is like this long. Just has to reach from the back of the Revox directly into this box. Then I can take my XLRs and I can go all the way out of a snake and come back to my patch bay. And another great example where I'm using active electronics in my own studio is my little Eurorack rig. All of the signals that that little unit generates are all unbalanced. But I've got this amazing little balancing I.O. Well, this little I.O. is an active unit. It allows me to send directly out of my console into my Euro rack and come back with no weird impedance mismatches or anything. And of course, that's available on my patch bay, which gives me even more flexibility on what I can do with those Euro rack signals. Now, speaking of patch bays, one of the smartest things that I did in building the studio was to order all of my custom cables that connect back to my patch bay with a full 10 foot fan out on the end of each one of these. The beautiful thing about this, when you find a really great cable maker, is that they put a shield on every one of these individual wires that is magical to work with in a studio. The best way for me to describe this kind of wire is you can actually hear it. It's sort of, it's not like rubber, it doesn't stick to itself. You can literally have a wire going through a whole snake of cables and you can grab the end of this thing and just start pulling it back and the thing will literally find its way home. This will not get restricted on other wires. My logic behind ordering all these snakes with such a large fan out was to simply not limit myself when it comes to my setup. I didn't want to be locked in. It's a beautiful thing to be able to move gear around and switch things in and out and not have to get the soldering iron out every single time. Yeah, the flexibility and options of a full 10 foot fan out is absolutely awesome and I strongly encourage it. Now another point, if you're ever in a position where you're ordering custom cables for a studio build like I did here, once you've gone around and done all the measurements for the whole room, I recommend that you add at least 15 feet to every one of those snakes and to some of them, more. Substantially more in some cases. This snake that I'm holding on to right now is still connected to my patch bay and yet I can unravel the thing and bring it back and set it on my workbench and work on it. Actually, this snake that I'm holding was originally designed as a roaming snake. It was going to be nothing more than eight channels that would be able to move anywhere in my studio and connect gear. Well, 
Like a lot of studio owners, I just keep adding equipment to my room. So yeah, sure enough, this spare roamer cable is no longer available. Every single one of these connections has a new home. And what's so cool about the extra wide fan out is that four of these eight connectors are destined for the leftmost side of my console. The other four I'm gonna use for the Revox. Well, the new home for the Revox is literally on the other side of the room. So as great a fan out as this was, it's still not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and desolder these four barrel connectors. And I'm gonna go ahead and add this awesome piece of multi-core Mogami that I found in my cable box yesterday. I'm just gonna extend so that I can easily reach the Revox. I've already soldered on four XLRs for the PV line amp. Yeah, this Revox is just a couple hours away from being electronically balanced, plus four, and available in my patch bay. Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session, and I strongly encourage you to get balanced. Every single connection in your studio, make sure it's got a dedicated twisted pair and a proper shield around it, and that that shield is never tied into the audio signal. Listen to what happens to your noise floor.